This is going to be one of my favorite videos and it has been a year in the making. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing okay. This is Rogue Hat and this low-end laptop from 2012 has six operating systems installed. It has Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, Mac OS Catalina, Hackintosh, Kali Linux, and Ubuntu, all running perfectly. Installing this on a high-end PC would be tedious enough, but on a low-end laptop, it's a whole different thing. So I wanna tell you guys what kind of problems did I run into, how I did it, how did I manage to make my bootloaders play nice with each other, and what's the point of having this many operating systems, and whether you should do it or not. And it's also a guide, sort of, as to how to optimize low-end PC. By the way, I'm still not done. Um, I want to see how far I can push this machine from 2012. I might do another video titled 15 operating systems in one, but there's a point where it just gets redundant, um, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so this machine is Asus K56CM. I bought it last year for about 250 Australian dollars. It came with four gigabytes of RAM, 320 gigabytes of hard drive, 720p screen, and a DVD drive. I only bought it to have a machine on which I can do crazy and insane experiments and pushing it to its limits. I installed Windows 10 standard version, but it was slower than a competent PC. Not terrible, but noticeably slow. I bought an eight gig RAM stick by Crucial from Amazon for $45. Even though K56 shows as 8GB max supported, theoretically the motherboard can still support up to 16 gigs. So I hesitantly put the stick in and it booted up showing 12GB of RAM which is enough for me for a vast majority of the use cases. And the experience was extremely noticeable. After that I still wasn't done even though my laptop was flying. I had an i7 second generation lying around and I got the 500 gigs hard drive from that and put it in my ASUS. Now everything was running perfectly, but then I noticed something peculiar. There was a drive showing up in my disk management. No USB, no SD card, no external drive was plugged in. What was this mysterious drive? Did I mount an ISO or something that was just showing up as a virtual drive? After a bit of research, it turns out that this is an onboard SSD that comes with my model. 32 gigs in space, very limiting space I know, not a whole lot that you can do with it, but it unlocked some significant potential for me. There is a Windows 10 revision by an amazing member of our community, Ghost Spectre. I have tested a lot of Windows revisions and Ghost Spectre's revision is by far the best for low-end PCs and not just for low-end PCs, for high-end PCs as well. You can choose which features you want to install, ranging from basic Windows features like printer functionality to advanced features like LZX compression. This revision basically cuts all the bloatware and, and some necessary outdated function services and registry. So I installed the Ghost Spectre revision which only took about 10 gigs for the basic installation. I installed all my other softwares and most frequently used ones and critical ones I installed in the SSD and other programs in another drive called Program Files which was 20 gigs partition that I made from my hard drive. After all there was 3 gigs left in my SSD which for an average user would be problematic but I made adjustments and modifications to my programs and softwares so they wouldn't put temporary files in my SSD and delivery optimization files. Other unnecessary files I would delete myself from system directories. I had a full-fledged optimized laptop and the funny thing is it was faster than my high-end laptop Dell Inspiron which features i7 6th generation, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory and 128 gigs of SSD. It was time to push this laptop beyond its limits. I wanted to install Mac OS X, but not on a virtual machine like a peasant. I wanted to run natively on this low-end laptop, which took me about three frigging months of research, trial and error, and extreme hard work. To give you guys some context, majority of the Hackintosh community use PCs because you can get some specific hardware components, which are the same as Mac Pros or MacBooks. And in that case, you also know your chipset, which makes things way easier, comparatively speaking. Installing it on a laptop is just insane, especially a low-end one. The funny thing was that I could probably run the Hackintosh on my high-end laptop, but I'm very stubborn and I wanted to run on this low-end machine. I won't go into much detail, but after a huge struggle with mouse, keyboard input, SMB, GPT, kernel extensions, panic calls, open core errors, ACPI errors, and video memory allocation errors, Mac OS X was running buttery smooth. I might make a detailed full guide on how to 
to install Hackintosh. Anyways, I installed it on my hard drive, which was converted from MBR to GPT scheme. Still, I wasn't done. I installed Kali and Ubuntu on the same hard drive while partitioning. Everything was okay and I was running four operating systems, but then I ran into some pretty nasty problems. These two Linux distros have the bootloaders Grub and Grub2. So first Ubuntu stopped working, it wouldn't boot at all and just displayed me this Grub. Then Kali stopped working. I tried installing them multiple times but three incompatible systems running off the same hard drive and one of them having an unauthorized bootloader was the problem. I also tried Clover but it only made things worse because Grub2 was interfering with it. Also you have to turn off fast boot, secure boot, VTX, VTD and some other security options in order for Hackintosh to boot. Grub and Grub2 bootloaders weren't playing nice with Windows bootloaders and OpenCore bootloader, and I have two theories as to why that was. Both Kali and Ubuntu prefer MBR scheme because it requires XFAT partition scheme to install, and that older scheme plays well with MBR. Another theory is because Grub2 displays a list of installed operating systems, it would boot into Grub bootloader itself, and then my laptop would restart and boot into Kali. There is a potential solution to this. You can use Grub2 bootloader to boot both both into Kali and Ubuntu instead of having two bootloaders interfering with each other and deleting the additional bootloader. But it requires updated BIOS as I tried this solution, but my BIOS wasn't recent enough. I came so far, but I couldn't boot those four systems together on my crappy laptop. Still an option left however. I remember that my laptop had a DVD drive and I could connect 2.5 hard drive to it but it is trickier than it sounds because DVD has a different interface than SATA hard drives. It has different connectors and interface but luckily you can get around this problem by buying a DVD caddy which provides an interface and you can put it in your laptop in place of the DVD drive. I did that, went to BIOS and it recognized the drive. It is slower than the 5400 RPM hard drive because it is ADA interface. So I installed Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11 on one hard drive, Ubuntu on the SSD and Kali and Mac OS X on a separate hard drive. Having bootloaders on different hard drives is definitely the way to go. Windows 11 was a piece of cake. I overcame the TPM problem by using the install.wim workaround, link to that in the description if you want to get around the TPM secure boot problem. Also, according to my sources, this workaround is not going to be valid when Windows 11 comes out this holiday season as there are going to be additional checks running at different stages of the installation process. This video was almost done but then Windows 7 wouldn't boot because of the GPT partition scheme. I installed the x64 version but for some reason it didn't help. I converted the disk into MBR and lost three of my operating systems. That wasn't even my biggest problem. As I mentioned before, Grub and Grub2 kept losing their mount points because there were multiple operating systems installed and sometimes I would be able to redirect them but other times I couldn't. After painstaking trial and error I solved this problem by reinstalling Kali and making Grub separated and fixed at a single location. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. The ideal way to boot multiple operating systems is to have multiple computers, but that's not sustainable. So the next best thing is to have multiple medium sources like hard drives or SSDs. Except bootloaders are different. There are three Windows OS's running on this laptop and there is only one Windows bootloader. Unless our community can make a unified bootloader, we have to face this roadblock. The closest thing we've come to unified and universal is Clover, but that's not exactly what we're looking for if we want multiple booting. 
There are so many issues that I didn't go into because of time. I could theoretically push it even further by installing Windows 98, Windows XP, Windows Vista, other Linux distros, Mac OS X Big Sur alongside my existing operating systems, but then you're definitely asking for problems. But I'll probably do that. You know what? I think I'm definitely gonna do that. Push it to like DECA core 10 operating systems running. We'll see. Keep in mind that if you don't have multiple drives, please don't go over triple boot unless you know exactly what you're doing. You could lose your data as I did when I was installing Kali Linux. I want to say special thank you to my viewers. I know this topic was dry and long and I thank you for sticking around. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this hellish ride. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.